Welcome to In the Middle with Principal Haywood, Season 2. We're kicking off today with longtime social studies teacher here at Norton Middle School, Mr. Bill Kuzmich. Bill, thank you for being on yeah, the show. It's my pleasure. Yep, on this show what we do is we get to know the teachers and students and personalities of Norton Middle School. And uh, when I was thinking of guests to kick us off, I know you're a fan favorite with the kids. You've been here a long time, so yeah, I know a lot forever. of people. Uh, probably know a lot about you because you've been a, you've been here and you've been a fixture at this school and in Norton itself. But there's probably a lot of things people don't know because you're an interesting guy. Okay. So we're going to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting right. guy. Um, where did you grow up? I grew up in the rough and tumble streets of Dorchester. In Dorchester, let me tell you, so Dorchester people have it. You know, thoughts or views of oh, Dorchester yeah. and it's changed so much over time, back yeah, and forth, it's... different things. Um, what was the best things in Worst things about that, or what did you like or dislike about growing oh, up? What I loved about Chester. it was that a lot different than Norton. A lot different than Norton. Yes. Yeah, you just had so much freedom. You could, you know, kids yeah. everywhere you can hang around, and we yeah. used to just ride the T and head into different communities, which <laughs> yeah. you'd never be able to do today. Yeah. And then the parents would just let you go, and as long as yeah. you came in for dinner, yeah, I was lights. everywhere. Street lights, street lights are on. Come yeah. in, and that was it. I used to, we used to so do our thing. So you were a free range kid. Free range kid, exactly. <laughs> you were yeah. free range. <laughs> I was ahead of my time. Okay, I was see, a free range kid. Okay, free range kid. <laughs> They're circling back to that, but that's what you were. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Right. Free range. Exactly. <laughs> um, where did you go to college? I went to Bridgewater State University. Okay. Yeah. Did you just right from the get go, right? No, I went to uh, Quincy College first. Yep. For criminal justice, I was working yep. at the uh, sheriff's department, so I was going to be. I was going to the whole law enforcement route. Yep. So I was big into that, and I just yep. worked there 15 years. Yep. Oh, so you worked at Suffolk County work? Sheriff's Department. Suffolk in Boston. County Sheriff's. Yeah, Department. Child Street Jail. Okay. Yeah. Child so Street. So you worked in corrections Jail. over there. Corrections for a long, long time. All right. Whole different career. A whole different career, yeah, and then you came to career. teaching. What? Um, well, I guess the obvious thing. What either caused you to say, you know what, I want to change from corrections, or what drew you to teaching? What What was the oh, the gear that got you there? Was it you know, I need to make a change from correction because I imagine that's a kind of a yeah, tough job. Yeah, that was the, that was the was thing. It, I, I needed to make a change. Okay. To get to that point where it's just too much mentally, physically. Yeah. So I just think it, you know, teaching would be a good thing. I love history. <laughs> <laughs> teaching not of, stressful. Yeah, not yeah, not as stressful. You know, you yeah. got uh, you got in in the uh, prison. You have, you know, crazy people in the yeah. cells, and in here you have the you know the kids. Yeah. But the kids yeah. are a little better. Yeah, yeah. I can deal with the kids. They're more fun. Exactly, yeah, exactly. They, they can still that. be president. Yeah, they can, yeah exactly. Everybody yeah. still eligible Everybody for office. Everybody here can still vote and still yeah. be president, not in there. Yeah. That was fascinating. So, um, and then what What drew you to history? Oh, I've always loved history as a kid. I yep. was always into politics and grew up with the, um, there was a lot of stuff going on back then in yep. Southie, Dorchester, busing, and I just. So you knew you were kind of witnessing. I knew I was history. witnessing to it, right? Yeah. There was a lot going on. I loved it. How long have you been in Norton? So I said, I've said a long time. Yeah, I was there in the intro. Time. Yeah, me and Thomas how, Jefferson how, came in at the same time. How long? Like, 21 years I started this year. This 20? 20, first year teaching in Norton Middle School. Yeah. So you, so your whole teaching career? Yeah, whole here. teaching career, yeah. I did um, student teaching in Quincy High. I was okay. originally wanted to become a high school teacher. Yeah. In the open, it was eighth grade, and then... Yeah, yeah, I love it, and I stayed with it. And you spent eighth grade. Eighth you grade, I love school. the eighth grade. Because yeah. they're just at that point where you can still have fun with them. And yep. Not too young. And yep. So yep. 21 years. Uh, wow. It's, it's up there. Wow. That's like two, two full careers. There. Yeah, two, yeah. exactly. Um, any other interesting jobs that people might, you, know, you had as a kid or even before that? Like, I worked yeah. at um, St. Margaret's Hospital, Police and Security. Okay. Which was uh, pretty interesting. Yep. And I work, right now I work at Mass General Hospital Police and Security. So I'm still okay. in that whole law enforcement okay, role. So I've been there 10 that. years. Okay. So I still do that. Awesome. And I worked at Budweiser yeah. for a little while. Delivery? delivery? Yeah, delivery. Is that delivery how you get all your muscles? Yeah, yeah. So I work <laughs> throwing kegs around. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, your kids came here to this school. Yeah, Ryan and Taylor both came so here. So Ryan and Taylor. Yeah. Um, were they on your team? They're on eight team? white. Yeah, they did not want to go with dad. They did not want to go <laughs> they with did dad. Not want nothing to do they, with dad. And they, they could have, as you know. Yeah, yeah. They could yeah. have. Neither one of them. They neither just, one of them. Every day I saw them, they just walked down the hallway. So that was Pretended there. I wasn't there, yeah. Okay. That was it. All Three right. years. Um, and what are, what are their ages now? Taylor's going to be 20 in December and Ryan's 18. Ryan's 18. Yeah. Tell me something that your kids do better than you do now that you kind of uh, hate to admit. Yeah. 
Ryan plays hockey a lot better than I do. Yeah. Right now. Okay, I've Way heard better. that. Yeah, he's an incredible hockey player. I thought I was pretty good, and I played yeah. forever right up until the men's leagues. Yeah. But Ryan's uh, stepped over me. Probably when he was a squirt. Yeah. He was better than I was as an yeah. adult in the men's league. But, yeah, yeah, he's beyond. He's beyond. And beyond. is he still playing? He's playing in probably. juniors now, yeah. Oh, he graduated really? Southeastern last year. He's playing junior hockey. He's in Detroit right now. Oh, really? tournament, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's fantastic. So he, so he's kind of passed you. He's kind of passed me, but by, by a little, okay. yeah. He's kind of, so know. the student has passed the, the teacher. The student has so definitely speak. passed the teacher. Well, that's yes. good. That's yeah. what parents yeah, are about, what, you that's know, good. and teaching's about. Right, exactly. You're trying to get kids yeah, you want them to be better than? To get beyond you. Get beyond us, right. Yeah. Um, what's a movie you can watch over and over? Oh, a movie I can watch over and over would be uh, The Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen? Great movie. Yeah. You know, Lee Marvin, fascinating. Yeah. World War II, I love it. Yeah. Just something about it. Yeah. Oh, well, it all makes James sense. Brown. Right? Yeah, it all makes sense. Are there movie quotes that you use on a regular basis, uh, down with your class or or sayings? Yeah, I've had a couple with uh, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Um, go ahead and make my day. <laughs> this, is a, this is a classic. You, you mean know? turning in homework and stuff? Yeah, turning in homework. Day. Make my day. Make my, it's exactly. an easy way yeah. to make. Yeah, it's make an easy way day. to make my day. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. That's that's one of your favorites. <laughs> if someone had to narrate your life, who would you want the narrator to be? What I want the narrator to be. You had a narrator for your life. Um, you know, some people would be like, oh, you know, Morgan Freeman, narrator my oh, life. Yeah, Who Morgan, would be yeah. yours? Um, I think it would be Charlton Heston. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Oh, Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments, Can't exactly. Can't beat that. Yeah. <laughs> Cannot beat the Ten Commandments. Somehow all your answers really make sense <laughs> yeah, to me. Don't they? I'm I knew, I knew they would. I'm not going to surprise at all. Um, all right, you're kind of a unique looking person. When I first came here, I was like, whoa, this guy, you know, big. You kind of fit the mold of like that whole uh, with the security, the police, right. and things like that. And, you know, you have a presence about you. One of the things when I had to teach them, look, people, people with a presence. But you got a unique look with the, with the build yeah. and the bald head and everything. So this question I kind of thought of, it's kind of a strange question, but um, let me see. Uh, would the world be a better place if everyone looked alike? <laughs> oh, yeah. If everyone looked exactly the so, same, say like you, would the world like be a better me, place? Yeah. Definitely be, uh, yeah, it'd be more intimidating, more secure, definitely. But yeah. it would definitely yeah. be more secure. Definitely place. be more secure. Yeah, there'd be more presence. Yeah, probably wouldn't be better, but it'd be, it'd be, you know, it'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think so much of kids is, uh, you know, this kind of thing, and you've seen it down the thing where they want to be unique and different, right. and at the same time they have the forces like, hey, we all have to have under yeah, armor on. Right. We all have to same. have the same stuff. Right, exactly. So you wonder which pressure is winning out, and at certain times it seems like the peer pressure, like everyone's got to fit the mold or fit a certain right. thing, so kind of the be alike thing versus, you know, kids wanting to be different and free and unique. Yeah, individual, right. So, You're right, it's true. They it's all like, want the same It's like quote. two strains going two, on at the same it is. time. Exactly. Um, what's the oldest thing you own? The oldest thing I own? Oh, wow. Oh, probably, um, probably my hockey gloves. Oh, I really? Still use the same <laughs> still gloves, use them. like, yeah, from whatever. And the the, the, the Paul Coffey versions? Yeah, yeah, the Paul Coffey versions. Yeah, like the Bobby O'Reilly's. Really? Any, those. any padding oh. left in those? Oh, not, nothing. It's just, nothing? Um, it's just all hands. Yeah, that's it. Oh, man. Yeah, those are all. Do you get them redone or do you just, they just hold? Just holes. holes. Just I holes. love the holes. Yeah, yeah just, okay. <laughs> totally. Um, in the past, okay, because you like history, obviously you're a history, history guy. I go into your class, I always get drawn in by something you're doing in class, a topic, or, you know, you're doing the Quizlets and all the yeah. um, all the online stuff now. Which, which is incredible, because it took me a while to get there. Yeah. I was like old school, command, no computers. I was still yeah. doing typewriters back yeah. in college. And, yeah. But I'm, I've adopted to it. I like no, it. No, you're making adapted great strides. Yeah, I have been. Slow but sure. Yeah, getting there. And so I come in, yeah. and then I see the stuff because when you do, when it's like that, it's very visible. Like right. the learning is much more visible uh, when I come through the rooms. When you have stuff projected on the right. board, and, and you have that interactive thing going on with the kids, so I always get drawn in. And um, so I know you love history, like you know, not just because you do it for your job. I know you really like it. But in the past, people used to be buried with items that they would need in the afterlife. Right. If you had to pick some <laughs> items to be buried with, I'm not trying to get morbid, but right. I knew you could oh, handle yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can. What would you have buried with you? To make sure that uh, prized possessions and things prize like possessions. that. Prized possessions. I definitely have. Uh, yeah, I'd have. I'd have a hockey stick. Yeah. Love hockey. That's a big pot. Yeah. Yeah, hockey's one of my big things. I'd have. 
I'd have a, I collect knives, so I'd have yeah. I'd have a couple of my knives. Okay. I'm a big knife collector, and uh, what else would I collect? Um, there's a couple. Th I'd have my uh, father's keychain from the Von Dohm fire. He was a boss of firefighter. He gave oh, me this yeah. keychain. There's a bunch of firefighters died. Yeah. I put that in there. I still have that. Yeah. And, so some um, sentimental. Things, yeah, some sentimental things. things. Little sports things. Yeah. A couple of collections and. Um, what else I'd have. Well, that's good. I mean, that yeah. tells us a lot. Yeah. You get the sports were a big part of your life, yeah. uh, connections to your dad and the famous historical thing, right. and then the something that you collect with the knives that you know you probably have a, have a lot of knowledge about it. Right. Probably invest some time in. Um, if um, why just stop with the hockey? You know, you had some uh, hip done, right? Yeah, I had a full hip replacement done <clears throat> yeah. two years ago. Yeah, how's so that going? Kinda, it's get it's going. It has its moments. Was know. that the final knockout? That was the final hockey? knockout for hockey. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. I couldn't tie my skates one night. I was yeah, and I couldn't tie them. I thought oh, this is that's end it. End of the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was it. Um, how useful would you be in a zombie apocalypse? They got to be useful, definitely. Yeah, I think I could. I could see one. Yeah. I, I I know all the people of a purple just feel comforted knowing that yeah. you're part of their safety plan. Yeah, I kind of uh, can roll with the heavy. Survival tactics. You'd be down with the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. So you're prepared. I'm prepared. Definitely okay. prepared. Yeah. All right. Like you'll you'll let happens. me in, right? I'll, you're in. You're one okay. of the first people. All right. Um, what is something that can't be taught but can only be learned with age? Uh, I think, like, they don't even learn with age. just common sense. Like, people, yeah. as they get older, they're going to start realizing things that yeah. start making sense to them. Once they start going out and they get a job and they have to... Yeah live in the real world and yeah. pay taxes and yeah. things like that. They'll start realizing, yeah. they'll start coming around to it usually. Yeah. And then yeah. when they're outside in, in the real world and seeing yeah. what's going on. Yeah. It's one of those things yeah. I see you uh, in your classroom when, when I'm in there and uh, you know from my own experience that as you're teaching the kids, you're, you're giving them the facts, you're laying out the connections between things, you're trying to make real world connections. Right. But just that experience thing. Yeah. Where they can take all their past learning and connect it to their new thing, and it's it's kind of like uh, tough because you gotta you know that some of the lessons aren't going to be fully taught exactly until, until they plug in that experience, in, right? It's like voting, and yeah. There's a lot things of things, like that. you know, driving. There's just things that yeah. you're going to start getting to. Yeah. So yeah, just life. Um, what's the most interesting building or place you've ever been? Um, most interesting place I've ever been was oh Washington D.C. Yeah. They have all the uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was fascinating. The sure. Vietnam Wall. Yeah. Yeah, there's just so much history. Changing there. of the Guard. Changing of the Guard was great. I love yeah. that. When yeah. did you go down there? Personal? Or was was there a field trip? I was there with my kids a couple of years ago. Took yeah. Them down. I've been down there several times, but I wanted to have them see it. Yeah. Before they. Uh, oh, was, that's great. Yeah, and they loved it. It was it was fun. The whole cemetery and. Yeah. There's so much, there's great history there. Yeah. The history, American yeah. History Museum. Yeah. And the World War II Memorial. World War II Memorial is awesome. Jefferson Memorial. Yeah. So, so just Washington, D.C. Yeah, Washington, D.C. is pretty, stuff that goes in there. pretty interesting. Um, if you could have an all-expense-paid trip to go see some historical or famous monument, you know, no cost, where would you go? Where would you ask to go? Where would I go? I think I'd go to, um, actually, I'd like to go to San Antonio. Mexican-American. Well, the Alamo. Yeah, that's go different because I haven't done the Alamo. So yeah. I'd, I'd do the Alamo. You go to the Alamo. Yeah, I'd go to the Alamo. <laughs> Again, <laughs> Mr. Cosmich, all your answers are making sense. Yeah. They're all making sense. <laughs> um, so um, what's your favorite part of history to teach? I mean, history is so broad, and I sometimes just say, you know, history is the same. Right. Um, you know, yeah. kind of our view that changes on it. But um, What's your favorite lesson or, or era to teach? Well, my favorite era to teach is uh, World War II. Yeah. That was incredible. Now, do we, we often we, get to that? We no, do we don't get to that, war. but yeah. I did it at you know, Quincy, and it's the stuff that's my favorite. Yeah. It, it's fascinating. There's so many characters and things yeah. that went on there. Yeah. It's related to today. So, yeah, World War II would yeah. be my favorite part that I like to read about. Yeah. Great military history, and yeah. there's a lot of uh, interesting people. Yeah, it is. Um, it's unbelievable. The wars and the battles yeah. and the characters from Churchill to Eisenhower to yeah. Patton. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's um, unlike other parts of history that we teach, uh, whether it be the ancient world and things like that. And your curriculum is switched probably a bunch oh, of times bunch over of the times, course yeah, of the, at least, the years. At least a dozen times. Yeah, I mean, I think they're finally getting <laughs> the framework set. Right. 
but over the course of years, it's changed so much. But um, you know, as you start talking about it, World War II is really something where you can teach history through the personality of individuals. Right. Individuals. You Everyone else, you're teaching it through you know massive events, massive big events. scale stuff where you can really look and, and boil it down to. Franklin Roosevelt or the relationships with Eisenhower, but they're really teaching history through people, right? Through Which personality, is great. biographies, right? It's fun. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. I think that would be great. I wish we could teach that type of stuff. Um, you know, I wish it lined up with the curriculum oh, I to, too, to yeah. our school. Yeah, and it'd Definitely. be closer to the kids. I think they'd uh, yeah. see it. Yeah. So maybe we should teach backwards. Yeah, maybe we should, maybe we yeah, should start yeah, with the most yeah, recent stuff yeah, the most recent. and teach backwards. That'd be interesting. Start yeah. The most recent and if we stuff. don't get to the dinosaurs, we'll live. Yeah, 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 yeah. we could survive. We might have came up with an idea. I know. I think yeah, we did. Maybe we should start <laughs> closest and then go back. Right. Um, what are, so what are some uh, songs uh, that you like that when you hear them, they kind of nostalgic to you? What are the oh. old songs that you used to listen to that bring you back to Sweet Home days Alabama? In, to, 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 days Skinner. In, the days in Dorchester, <laughs> yeah. Sweet Home Alabama. That would be it. Yeah, Skinner. That's one of them. Yeah, Skinner. Yeah. Def Leppard, Guns yeah. N' Roses. Yep, Guns N' Roses. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. All the classic sure. rock. Yeah. Classic rock. So big classic yeah, rock guy. That's easy that's talk. Stuff. Yeah. That's, right. that's my stuff. Okay. Any kids in class know any of these things when you bring them up? Um, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> once in a while you once get in a, the Yeah, once in a while, while you get the kid. Yeah. Most of shirt. them are like, well. Yeah. There's a few though. Yeah, it's a couple. You get a few here and there. Yeah, ACDC. I see a few of those around. And yeah, some of them. Yeah, once in a while. Yeah, I think they got those at Target though. Yeah, they got those at Target. They have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, being a student of history and uh, you know, growing up in Dorchester and in Boston during the time that you grew up, what is the the most historic thing or the first historical thing that you can remember that you were alive during? Oh, the first historical thing? Like the big, like if you look back and say, you know, I remember, obviously, like we all remember 9 11. We all remember maybe the bur the wall coming down in Berlin, things like that in our lifetime. What's the furthest thing back that you can remember? Kind of like I remember, you know, that was going on. Maybe not where you were particularly, but what's the most historic thing or oldest um, thing you remember? Oh, the oldest thing I remember would be. If my uncles would be around, I'd be real small, but the Vietnam War would be like coming okay. to an end, and I was. Okay, so that's on the yeah, that was on the news. Yeah, that was on the news. My my uncle was in it. Yeah, be at the house so talking Nick, about Nixon it. Nixon impeachment. Yeah, Nixon like impeachment that. would be there, right? So that that's Reagan what was, shot. Yeah, Nixon impeachment would definitely. That's a great one. Yeah, Watergate. Elvis dying. Elvis dying. Yeah, yep. yeah. So those type of things yeah, when you were a kid, and these type of things. And do you think that the talk of your uncles and all this history going on kind of what sparked your interest in history? Yeah, it would, like you it said would be, you've always had it, but what do you think sparked it? I think it was that because they were into the. Uh, my father was in the Korean War. Okay. My uncles were in the, um, yeah, Vietnam. Yeah. And cousins, so they were always talking about it, the military aspects and. Yeah. Found it uh, interesting, you know. Yeah. Oh sure. That, I mean, that's a. Yeah. Uh, uh, my grandfather was in World War Two. Yeah, so, World War Two. I mean, right, just yeah. learning what yeah. that meant. What did that mean? Yeah, it's incredible. You know, and for so, for, uh, for so long, uh, as I was growing up. You know, um, from the mid '70s up through the '80s and such, you know, war was something that I just read about or heard about. Right. I, you know, now we've been at war for 25 years. Uh, oh, exactly. You know, in Iraq or in Afghanistan, I guess kids think it's probably a natural state. You right. Know, the kids nowadays probably just think, "Yeah, we're at a war right now," or we have troops over here or there. But there was a period after Vietnam where troops weren't going off. So right. I mean, not that we're in the Cold War. There's yeah. Nothing so it was there. really fascinating to me to hear about, you know, my, what my grandfather was doing and where he might have been. And um, so perhaps just, uh, you know, hearing uncles and family members talk about it kind of sparked a lifelong interest for Yeah, you. it did. Yeah, they were always into it. And yeah. It was a big um, topic at the house. Yeah. Um, do you find today's kids, okay, because we're talking, uh, um, I hate to do a monologue here, but I always hear them working in a middle school, and you probably get people probably don't even believe you do what you do. They're they probably, don't. They, they, they always say what? They're a cop or military. Yeah, or yeah they probably don't even believe it. But right. you know, they, oftentimes people outside of the school have opinions about kids. They say, "Oh, kids nowadays!" Or, I can't believe kids nowadays. And some of it's true, and some of it's with reason. We see some of the, right. the trends and actions that they see do. Um, but I'm always blown away by this generation of kids. Say from you know now to ten years back. Uh, how many join the military 
and and like go off to war and knowing, I mean, they're not going just to boot camp for the summer. Right. I mean, they're probably going to be deployed. And, um, you know, I, it really, you know, I always try to remember that when people kind of speak ill of the kids nowadays, oh, yeah. that there are a whole generation of kids that sign up knowing that they're going to be deployed somewhere and that this isn't just, you know, a summer down to Paris Island. Not that that's fun. Right, right. I'm sure it's not. Yeah. I'm sure that's not a fun summer. <laughs> but, you know, that they're probably going off somewhere. Do you find today's kids are more or less interested in politics and world events than than in the past? Are they do they are they more engaged or are they less engaged? Right. From I your think perspective, from my perspective, they're less engaged right now. Less engaged. Yeah, a lot of them. I think they're well. There's that whole. There are a lot of them are afraid to talk about it. Okay. That, so that, I, I think they could be engaged if, if you know if people let them. But there's that whole yeah. fear of should I bring up certain things in politics so they just stay yeah. away from it so I that's even seeping down that's we know that's true that's we know that's true everywhere. right because when i was first here they did engage me and talk about certain they asked me about yeah. it. now so silence, maybe maybe right. they're interested but not engaged right i think they're interested they're, but not engaged interested exactly. but not engaged yeah well that's uh right. that's interesting i mean it must be uh you know, with uh, the way the climate is, it must be, is it tough to kind of juggle that to make sure we're getting out of balanced viewpoint and no one feels, is that something that you actively try to like make sure people feel comfortable sharing opinions and don't feel, like how do you do that? Because when oh, yeah. I was teaching history like 15 years ago, I, I don't think I had to put as much thought into, you know, sharing my opinion or, or such. It just seems like it's a little, Locked down now. Do yeah, you feel that? Totally locked down. Now. <laughs> locked yeah, I down. Definitely don't want to share my opinion. Yeah. I'll just try to guide them and say these are the two sides and but yeah, it's yeah. definitely locked down and I think they know it's locked down. Yeah. A lot of oh, so it's not it's just yeah, a yeah. general feeling. Yeah, general feeling. They know yeah. they know a lot of them won't go say yeah. too much either. They were uh, yeah. I think they've been taught. Yeah. So it's well, well society it's kinda yeah. it's out there. Probably unfortunate because I right. think um, a great place uh, a great way to learn and uh, you might remember uh, this book series, being a history teacher, I'm not trying to age you, but for as long as you've been, like opposing viewpoints. Yeah, opposing viewoints. I remember that. That great, was great. great. I great used that in my yeah. class at the beginning. It's great because it would kind of give a balance, two yeah, sides was, to the right. thing, have some, you know, scholarly stuff yeah. on, on both sides. And, uh, you know, a great way to learn is through debate. Right. And I feel like that's becoming more challenging for people in our history department oh, it is. to do, to yeah. engage in in the learning experience of debate, because, as you know, I think it makes people look at their argument as much as someone else's. Right, two sides of the argument, and uh, yeah. you know, they want to clamp down on freedom of speech, and the answer to that is more speech. More speech, yeah. And just engage the person, and that's you can right opposing viewpoints. I don't even know if we could do that now. I'm like not even. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not <laughs> even mean, sure. Right. I brought those books in. Yeah. Who knows? And I that haven't tried a, it, but. That was a, a standard yeah. thing that it you was, would bring was in, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I I always viewed it as balanced, but I'm sure now that would be a fine tooth comb through. It, that it was, series. yeah. You have to walk that line. Yeah. But um, yeah. you know, I do think the kids are, are losing some skill building and uh, just some genuine learning that they would get through debate. And uh, I wish we could find a way. And I know uh, I know you guys are working to find a, a way to strike the balance because. Uh, like you said, the kids are interested right. but not engaged, not and I engaged. think it, we got to meet them where they're interested. I think you're right. We like do we got to. Gotta, meet them. They're interested in this stuff. They have opinions. They're uh, flooded by uh, news that we never were, but just because you know, unless you picked up the morning paper, right. you weren't getting it fed to you on your phone or whatever. Uh, so they have information. They have interest, and we don't have engagement. I know it's kind of sad, isn't it? It is. It's, there's it's so sad. much out there available to them and you know they yeah. want to get into it but yeah but they're, they're nervous they're nervous outside exactly too. just they're, like we are right? nervous yeah so we're going to try to uh find a way to strike that balance because I, I do think there's an opportunity being lost in some of our classrooms because people don't want to share opinion engage in debate and allow people the, the space to change their mind and to hear different viewpoints right. but that's all about that's otherwise you don't want if you don't hear a different viewpoint yeah yeah exactly um Switching gears, what's a secret talent you have or something that people don't know about you generally that they might find uh, oh, interesting? Um, I've trained in 35 years in Filipino martial arts. That's 
That's not surprising. Yeah, that's not surprising. True. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're but right. That's not surprising. Not right. surprising, yeah. but interesting. But interesting, right. Uh, now, do you keep, uh, are you able to keep up with that? You have, I can still done, do it, right. Yeah, but you still, still do that. It, yeah. Nice. Um, probably another thing not surprising would be shooting. I've shot for, um, yeah. you know, same thing, 30 years. Yeah. And uh, I've recently got into axe throwing. Probably not axe surprising. Throw? Axe throwing, yeah. Okay. Probably not surprising, but yeah. pretty good at it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Now, is that, is that something that they do at competition? Oh, they have competition. competitions. Yeah, they have competitions, that. right. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's fun. <laughs> we should go. We should go. Maybe you can bring me. I've we'll take a field trip. Yeah. It's about it's, learning. It's about it's, learning, right. It's all about the learning. It is. And you know I'd be open to something like that. You definitely would. Yeah. All right. So you like sports. You like it's activity. You do that. What's the most boring sport, and what would you do to make it more exciting? Well, the most boring sport is... Uh, of, of, like, the four major sports. Oh, the four major... I think uh, I hate to say sports. it would be baseball. And right, I have, right in the midst of a World Series. Thing. Right. And I have nothing against baseball. You know, I love baseball, but it just seems slow, and the games are so yeah. long. I think I'd somehow I'd have to figure a way to speed it up, or I don't speed know how. Up. Maybe the, the clock pitching clock or not going out to the mound as much or yeah. anything because you, we said you, you're a hockey guy too and oh, hockey's yeah. just so fast and oh yeah great football is fast paced and yeah. basketball baseball out of the four majors it seems like it's yeah the slowest <coughs> yeah i think that's four. why i um, have to speed it up somehow yeah it's uh doesn't have the interest level that right. it used to have i think i don't think the kids are into it and you, Nine innings, fast. 162 games it's yeah it's a tough thing right yeah yeah i think uh you know, you gave me an idea with the axe throw. I think they should be allowed to throw the ball at the runners. Right, exactly. That, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, that would. They'd be flying. That would down speed the things up. Uh, I think I might have read. You know, where okay. both history guys about to go. I think he used to be able, like back way back when you could throw the ball at the runners. Yeah, I think you're right. I think yeah, you could. I think it'd be you interesting. Be, you know, <laughs> that these people are tuning in. Yeah. To see people get <laughs> beamed at the ball. <laughs> you know, ratings would go way oh, up. Oh, way up through the way roof, up. right? And it started yeah. here and in the middle. Yeah, we, we did big ratings in baseball. How to speed things up, throw the ball at the runner again. Right. There you go. Yeah, you never know. You might be off to a new trend. Yeah, then. yeah. Um, if you owned a restaurant, what type of food would it serve? Oh, my favorite is Italian. Italian food. Yeah, chicken yeah. palm. Yeah. You know. So you judge a restaurant based on their chicken palm. Oh, exactly. That's yeah. my thing. Chicken palm is my go-to <laughs> That's food. the go-to. Yeah, meal. I love it. Yeah, Italian's. That's favorite. like everybody. That, I yeah. mean, I, that's it? how I am. Yeah, you know, I don't like, know if it's Italians get great stuff. I don't know if it's like uh, everyone just around here, you know, in this general area, yeah. or like all over the country. But we have like the North End too. Yeah, pan, you know. we have Federal Hill in the North End. We have two yeah. great places. Yeah. Um, what hours could you? What talk? Excuse me. What topic could you spend hours talking about? In, in history, or just in general? Oh, in general, I, yeah. I could talk about. Uh, Martial arts, yep. spend hours on martial arts, uh, yep. shooting, yep. hockey. What's, what's the martial art? Now, you, what's that martial arts again? Filipino me, martial arts. Now, what, uh, you know, give me a, another descriptor to that other than oh, Filipino. Be, what's that like? Is oh, it it'd be, like, um, is it? it's based on hand, knife, and stick. So it's like grappling and yeah, all that type of stuff? Yeah, it's got everything in it. It's got yeah. Combatives is the yeah. best way to put it. Yeah. It's like... Street fighting, yeah, not you know narrow yeah. it right down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so it's just kind of that shell, type of stuff. Of, yeah. All right. No injuries, right? No, not, not, in, not no too many. No. no. Yeah, I'm, I'll be here. No, I you'll just got be the here. Hip. I'll be here. Yeah. Okay. I'm always well, here. I never see you coming banged up, so you must, I know, yeah. you must be pretty good I, in the class. I'm pretty good at it. Yeah. You must be pretty good in the class. <laughs> and uh, why don't we end with what's the best thing about working with kids? Best thing about working with kids is, you know, when when you get them to. You have some fun with them and bring up some topic, and they're like, "Oh, yeah. they just surprise!" And like, yeah. I like to try to make it reality and bring it up to today, and they're like, yeah. you know, they're like shocked and you yeah. get a laugh out of them. And yeah, it's 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 pretty cool when you bring up uh, relevant stuff. I try yeah. to walk that line, but they yeah. get it. I get yeah. them there somehow. Oh, like making the connections. Yeah, making the connections without actually going too yeah. far with it. And, yeah, you know, they yeah. they get I, it. And they I see think that. it was in your class the other yeah, day. Yeah, to see that big smile on them, and I'm like, oh, yeah. that, they got they got it. They got it. Yeah, yeah that aha it. moment. Yeah, that aha moment. I love yeah. that. Yeah, how they make the connection. They make the they, connection. Yeah, it's that that bulb going off, and yeah. it is something that. Uh, that is awesome. It's yeah, and it, unless you see it, and um, you've been a teacher, I mean, I'm sure people can understand it, but. Uh, when you see kids really make those aha moments, it is special. It is, yeah. yeah. Mind you why we come in every day. 
you right, know, working yeah. with kids and uh, influenced a lot of kids. You've definitely influenced a lot of kids in Norton. 21 years in the business, um, tons of connections. Oh, incredible. Uh, I've had people that, that had their, their mother yeah. Yeah. Know, last year. Yeah, that's they right. Sat in class, so yeah, I think um, when I was first coming over to Norton, uh, you know, to get the job here and work here. My nephews had come through the school and oh. knew, knew you through hockey circles. Oh, yeah, yeah, hockey. And right. uh, one of the first names I heard was Bill Cousins. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. pleasure being on yeah. the show. Yeah, I'd yeah, like, like to have Thanks. you on, and Made thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Fun. So, uh, Bill, Mr. Bill Kuzmich, grade 8 social studies teacher, 21-year veteran of the Norton Public Schools, season 2 of In the Middle. Please stay tuned for future episodes where you can learn about the people, personalities that make Norton Middle School a special place.